Let's see. Hello, hello, everyone. There's Sandy. Hello, Sandy. I recognize your name. And Krista. Hello, Gail. Let's see here. Julia and Amy. Hello. Lori, I believe, is in the chat. And then I believe Lisa will be in in just a second. How is everyone doing this evening? Hello, Kathleen. Hope everyone is well and staying warm. Let's see. Hello. Let's see. Charlene in California. Let's see here. Mercedes, welcome. It's Mercedes' first time here. You have come to a happy little group. Deb. Ooh, Deb is in Denton. Ooh, you got nasty weather. Let's see. We're wonderful. Honeybee, Pansy arrived. Yay. Let's see here. Thank you, Miss Lori. Hello, Erica. Let's see here. Kathy, hello. Emily, up in Canada. Hello, hello. Yes, everyone's honeybee packages should be arriving. They are all caught up on orders. And so if you've been waiting to get something from the new release, um, now's the time to do that. And we have, while everybody is still kind of popping in, we have a card class coming up that I am teaching over on our uh, challenge group. And um, there's a list of supplies and everything. It is free to you guys. I, I teach the class. And I'll do it live. You can always catch the replay if you want to do that. But it's on February 25th. And I'm going to be teaching the card that is in the picture there. So with our lovely layer strawberries and um, the little cr the little wooden crate that is older, but it's so much fun to put all your lovely layers and things into, and then the opulent frames and some paper. And I always like to tell everyone you can use you know whatever products that you would like to use. I just want everybody to come in and join in the crafty time. And the way that you find that is go to Facebook and I'll put this back up again, but go to Facebook and you can look up Honeybee Stamps Buzzworthy Challenges and you'll see it and you can ask to join and I will approve all that. And then all the information that you need is up towards the top in the stuff that is like tagged towards the, uh, the top and you'll find all that good stuff. So I'll be the one that is um, getting together with... Uh, anybody that wants to join and teach the class, we're going to be doing um, some ink blending and stuff like that and um, just having a good time, really. Let's see here. Susan got her order on Tuesday. Uh, I got my order where? Oh, Tuesday. Um, let's see. I got my order. Were you on Tuesday? No, I wasn't on Tuesday. I actually had to cancel because yes, Sharon, this is live. Um, I had to cancel because I had a horrible migraine and I was not functioning very well. So let's see. I didn't get the memo that you're doing the live over here. I kept looking for you on Instagram. Yes, we're on, uh, Natalie, we're here all the time now. That way all of everybody can be all together instead of being split between Instagram and Facebook. Now everybody is all together. Let's see here. Uh, Gail, I love your class. Will you post any prep work ahead? Yes, I actually put a post out either today or yesterday where I asked if anybody wanted to get together and with me live while I prep everything. That way, when we go into the class on the 25th, all your die cuts and everything are all ready to go and we can in, uh, immediately get uh, ink blending and stuff like that. Let's see here. Thank you, Miss Krista. Let's see here. Lisa is there in the chat. You'll see Lisa Cisneros. She is the one that we usually chat with under the honeybee name, but you'll see her there is Lisa. She's our moderator. Let's see here. Somebody told me uh, I'll have to catch the replay flying home from Hawaii that day. We will forgive you, Amy. Make sure you take lots of pictures. Maybe you can post those in the challenge group. Um, I love Hawaii. 
Let's see here. And Lisa used to live in Hawaii. Okay. Let's see. How do we do the class? Joy um, or Jay, sorry. Um, you, it's just live in our challenge group. So if you just go in there and join, there will, it will go live there in Facebook. And so all you do when it goes live is just click it and you can watch it. You can watch it with us live. We'll, we'll craft and all card make together, or you can just come in and chat and hang out, uh, whatever you want to do. You can always catch the replay as well because it will live there in Facebook. And then um, we do giveaways and just chat. You can ask questions. Um, I'll be uh, teaching. Let me uh, let me throw the picture up one more time. I'll be teaching this card. And so, um, you know, if you want to ask questions about how did you ink blend that? I can't get mine to look like that or something like that. You can always go in and ask any kind of questions that you would like or um anything to that effect. Let's see here. It is free. Yep. And, and don't feel like I always tell people, don't feel like you have to have, um, all the stuff that's listed in the supply list. Just grab your supplies, um, come in and join us and, uh, go from there. But I do, I will say this, there's a lot of things that are like staple crafty pieces. So um, the little tin packs of Nina cardstock are in the supply list. And I'll get to my good point here in a second. Our glue, our liquid adhesive is in the supply list. Our blending brushes are in the supply list. There is a discount code just for our challenge group members that are in, that is in that post. So if you need to grab glue, blending brushes, some, if you want to try Nina cardstock or you just need some, you know, now's the time to grab all of those things. I always tell everybody, if you just need some of those great staples, um, there is a discount code for you there. And the class is completely free to you. Let's see, the class will be on Facebook. Correct. It, it will be in the challenge group, Gail. All right. Let's see here. Okay. I think we're ready to go down on to the desk view. So let me get lined up here. Okay. So this evening we are going to be crafting with the new Spring Meadow 3D embossing folder. And I'm going to show you and uh, recreate this little background. Now, I just put this together quickly for our release videos, but I'm going to show you exactly what I did. It's easy peasy. You, there's no, it, it looks like there was a lot of time spent here and there, but it's really, um, it, it's kind of messy, but it looks beautiful. So I'm going to start out and I already have my card, um, my card stock cut down because I want it to go on my card base here and I want to have the border all the way around. So I want to cut my card base before I emboss it. That way when I go back, I don't need to trim it down afterwards because that's where you're going to get the splits and stuff on the end because that card stock and all the fibers and things are already all broken down where you have embossed it. So if you're going to do any trimming after you emboss something that are you think that you're going to want it trimmed, do it first and then emboss. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set this aside. And I'm going to put my cardstock in here. It really doesn't matter where it needs to go. Now, you'll see a lot of people will spritz their cardstock with water. I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm just going to send it straight through my dye machine just like this. I've never had any problems. But if you're worried about your cardstock cracking, and I'm going to step over here to my big dye machine. If you're worried about that cardstock cracking, then by all means, spritz it just super lightly with water and it will prevent that. So it's going to get loud just for a second. And we're going to send that through the dye machine while all that cardstock presses into place. And here we go. Okay, so now I can pull my newly pressed cardstock out of that embossing folder. And when you pull it out, 
See how gorgeous it is, even just in white for a nice springy background. You could add, you know, a lovely layers pansy or a little flower or even just some little leaves or something or just a sentiment and you'll be good to go. I'm going to do this card. So I'm going to do a little bit of ink blending. Now, this may be the time where you um, want to pull out some of your little detail brushes. So you could either go with some of your little honeybee ones, or we now carry these little detail brushes that are from Waffle Flower. So it's kind of whatever floats your boat, whatever you want to use. And I've got several colors pulled out here. I'm going to move that aside. And I'm going to start out with the leaves. So I'm going to go with bundled sage and let's see here what I'm going to use one of the little brushes I'm going to kind of ink it up here and get it nice and juicy to start out with let's see I've never seen a, this embossing folder I haven't been shopping lately yes this is just uh released in our happy hearts release and so it's pretty new so I'm going to tap some of this off and I'm just going to barely kind of dust over the leaves and so as we kind of chat and I'll look up here every once in a while at the comments but I'm just gonna leave everything as is except for the leaves right now and I'm just dusting over the top and remember you can kind of get messy there are so many fun techniques that you can do with embossing folders um, Jennifer McGuire has a bunch of, uh, you know, different, she's a technique girl. And so she has a bunch of videos about different techniques and, but this is just fun, but I'm just going to go in here and you can tell I'm over here on the side, picking up kind of where I dabbed off and just working my way around. And you can see there's no like skill level to kind of move that around and get those little leafy areas. And I'm just kind of being careful to go around and just get the leaves because we're gonna do the little flowers and the petals and things in a different color. So I'm gonna hit right in there and I can kind of pick it up and look around here and you can tell it's going to give us this really pretty haze of color. Now, if you wanted to go with a brighter green, then you, you know, by all means, get gra uh, grab your rustic wilderness or mowed lawn or something like that. But I'm going for a, kind of this look that I have here and kind of a light elegant. This would be perfect for Mother's Day. And then I think that that looks pretty darn good. So I'm going to put the lid on that and let's keep moving along. Let's do our big blossoms and I'm going to do saltwater taffy and I'm going to grab a little bit bigger of a brush. Grab whatever size you want. These littler brushes seem to be the ones that I don't use as often because normally I'm doing like the um, lovely layers. I'm ink blending on those or I'm doing ink blending over a stencil. And so, you know, we use your, I usually use the bigger brushes for that. So this is a good time to kind of pull out the little detail brushes. And I'm just gonna hit some of these larger flowers. And some of the ink, where you, especially where you hit on those high areas, and I'll hold it up, um, it's going to be more concentrated where, it's where those bristles are really hitting on the high parts of where it is embossed. Okay, let's see here if I like that. Let's do that little guy right there. And let's darken this little guy up just a little bit. Okay, so that's looking really pretty. Let me kind of tilt it in the light. You can kind of tell where the high areas, like right around here, where it's gotten a little bit darker on some of the little detail areas. So that's cool, I like that. All right, so that is finished with that one. 
Now let's pull in, I think I'm going to do a little bit of speckled egg and do like a little bit of a blue little blossom. And I'm going to, let's see here. Hello. Let's see here. Uh, is that the bigger waffle flower stencil mat? Yes, it is. So I'm just going to hit and see that one. I may have gotten a little bit too dark for my liking, but we're going to keep moving on. I think I'm going to do some little patches. So I may do a, like a little blue patch here. Maybe here. Pick up some blue. And then let's do a little blue patch of flowers down here. There we go. Maybe get a little darker one to kind of go with that little guy. There we go. Okay, and so there's some blue kind of sprinkled throughout the background. Just like that. Okay, I'm kind of liking that. All right, let's pull in some yellow. So I've got fossilized amber and then all the rest of these little flowers, I'm gonna use fossilized amber. So I'm gonna start yellow, yellow, You can see this goes really fast because you're not having to be super precise and get everything perfect. Yellow here. Do that little guy yellow and this one. Okay, look at that. Let me kind of hold it up here. See all the pretty color just kind of scattered this way and that and I think it's looking pretty good kind of like it okay now that we have that this is where we're gonna add the sparkle do you see the shimmer in the background okay so that is perfect pearls and I have my perfect pearls here and this is just the original perfect pearls and all I do, if I can find a paintbrush, let's see here, here's one. All I do is spread it all over. Now, if you wanted to hit certain, let's say you wanted to color only certain flowers, like the big ones, and you only wanted the big ones to be sparkly, then you could go in with a little bit of like your embossing ink and it's a, a sticky ink. You could just kind of brush a little bit over the tops of just the flowers that you wanted to hit and then take your perfect pearls. But I'm going to make a mess and I'm going to go all over the whole background and I'm going to add shimmer all over. So think of this for like, an anniversary card, uh, a baby card even. Um, what else could we use? A shimmery birthday, Mother's Day, any of that kind of stuff would be pretty, but I'm going to put it all in there and work it all down in there and swirl it all around just like that and get into all those little nooks and crannies. There we go. Now this, I don't know if everybody makes a mess with Perfect Pearls, but I sure do mess. Okay, I've got this big like duster brush and now I'm just going to kind of take it and clean off my mess. And then we've got shimmer down in all those little nooks and crannies, just like that. Let's see here, let's play some more. Let's do, let's see here, I've got a clean blending brush. 
Let's play some more with Perfect Pearls. Let's really get it glimmery. So I'm going to hit all over the pink. Just like this. That. Let's do some pouncing here. Okay, now I'm going to use what's on my mat right here. Just like that. Now it's sticking to all of that sticky ink. I'm just going to swirl it all over. And I'm actually just picking up what's already on my little waffle flower mat. Okay, now let's pick it up. So you can, okay, do you see now where it's more concentrated? Where I dabbed that sticky ink? So it just depends on what, you know, look you're going for. This one has an all over shimmer. And then this one is a little more concentrated. You can tell where I, I changed the colors in the background too. Fun. Okay, now let's see here. Let's do a little mess clean up here. And then I've got my, our little ink blended embossed background. Okay, I'm going to pull out the old buzzword. So this is our buzzword thanks. So we have the stamp set, you know, our scripty word. Maybe some of you aren't familiar with our buzzwords, but we have buzzwords that are this size. And they all have the scripty word, whatever uh, it is. We've got thanks and birthday and celebrate and all kinds of different words. And then they all have these mix and match sentiments. Now, the coordinating dies all have a large shadow piece that has this pierced edge around it. There's the scripty word. And then there's just a basic shadow that's smaller than this one. And I have these already cut, but let me show you kind of what I, what I did to experiment. Okay, so I thought, can we take our buzzword die cuts and can we emboss them to make it something different? You totally can. So see how pretty the texture is on the embossed shadow? So that's just, you know, something extra. This is the middle shadow. And then here's the middle shadow in green. This is what the outside shadow looks like, just flat and white. But we could take, you know, this, let's say we did this in a green or, you know, whatever color, and then layer that across kind of the flowery top. And this is gonna be hard for you to see, white on white. But see how pretty that would be just with the texture back there? And then adding, you know, that on or, whoops, here is the flat and then the textured and then the plain. Okay, so this is my crazy idea. So let's see if it's going to work out. So I'm going to take my three shadow pieces and our liquid adhesive, and I'm just going to stack these up just like normal. Now, anytime you emboss something, it's going to totally distort and change, you know, even the backside of the paper. So I'm just going to drag the liquid adhesive and run it and hit those high spots that it leaves from the embossing folder. And I'm going to flip this over and then lay it down. Now, this could be totally genius, or it may not be cute at all. We're gonna, we're gonna quickly find out. Okay, but look how cute that is kind of with the flowers. Okay, 
So now we've got a little texture. Now let's take plain a plain white die cut. And I'm going to grab hold of it with my little tweezers here. And I'm just going to hit the thick areas of my scripty word here. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to start laying it down here on the left and then work my way across. And I'm not gonna press hard. I just want it to connect on the high points. So I'm gonna kind of leave it there and let it grab a hold. Leave my fingers there. I wanna let that liquid adhesive kind of do its thing. And I don't wanna like press hard because I want to keep all that dimension that's underneath there. And it covers a little bit of it up, but I think it adds some fun little texture back in there. It's going to be hard for you to catch on the camera. Let's see here. But now we're going to have kind of this pretty chunky die cut situation here. Okay. So let me move this guy aside. He's going to dry. And then again, I'm going to take my liquid adhesive. I'm going to run a bead and I'm just going to hit those high points. But even the back side of that, look how pretty even the back side is. I'm going to hit the back side there and flip it over. And then I'm going to hold the whole thing up and kind of get it shimmied around where everything is nice and straight. There we go. And then let's take this little guy. And let's add it maybe right across the center. And again, I'm gonna hold that just for a few seconds so it can grab hold because the only thing that it's really sticking to are the high points of all those little flowers that are sticking up. So I'm going to leave my fingers there just for a second so it will all grab hold of that underneath. Let's see here. I sure, I wasn't sure I'd like the shadow being embossed, but I do like it. You know, I wasn't sure about it either. Who was that? Sharon? But I thought, you know, I've never, I've never done that before. Let's just try. Now I do like this better. I think it would be, it would be pretty. Um, just this big shadow and then the scripty word over the top, because you'd be able to see more of the flowers, if that makes sense. But I was afraid with the big, um, the big shadow that it would be too busy. You know what? I'm gonna have to lay something. Let me grab an acrylic block. I'm going to lay that right there and let that kind of do its thing. Okay. And then I'm going to add some pearls because why not? Okay. Let me find, I can't find my, my good little die pick here. Okay. And I think I want to, let's see, do we want to pull in more green? I think I may do more green. So I think I may do pearls like in the big pink flowers. And then let's do one on this one. And let's do a big one over here. Like so. I'm out of my little baby pearls. You know what that means? I need some more. I may have to add a little more adhesive back there. Okay, and then let's do a big one here and a smaller one. Okay, 
And then let's do one more little one even down here because why not? And then let me show you how I'm gonna fix this little boo-boo. So let's add a little adhesive right back there. There we go. There's a lot of texture going on on this card. Let's see here. That's cute, just like one, two, three, four, five. I think I lost one. And I want that to grab right there. I'm gonna press it harder. Let's see. There we go. And I don't like to press after I have, you know, used the embossing folder, but we're going to press it down anyway. But I just did the pink ones, but you could do like a different color up in here or whatever. It's something different. And then here is my trial. Okay, what do you guys think? What do you think of the Spring Meadow embossing folder? So here it is all opened up. Let's see here. I'm going to have to make this for Mother's Day. It would be pretty. I think there's so many different occasions, really, that it can be used. Let's see here. I'm going to flip it back over, and I'm going to look at the comments here. I put, put one in the upper right-hand corner, maybe a pink. I think it does need some pink up there. I may need to spread some out. I was trying to do a little sprinkle in the pink flowers, and we're a little off kilter there, but that's okay. Let's see here. Um, all right, there's Lisa. Yeah, different ways just to play with the embossing folder. And I think what I want to do next is try that technique where they uh, you run your ink pad, you know, over the flat side, and then send the whole thing through to deposit the ink just on the flat area. I think that would be fun. Um, let's see here. But I, I got questions on this one. The glare there. I got questions on this one when we did the release video and stuff like that on how I did that and perfect pearls and stuff like that. A little lavender would be really pretty. Yeah, you could choose any kind of colors you wanted to. And I actually almost today um where you take like a solid color cardstock let's say we did a green or a pink or whatever and instead of brushing on colors like where we did the pink and the yellow and the blue you use like your white like your um oh like your opaque white and then just hit, and then on that cardstock, it's really gonna make those high points and stuff stand out on there. I think it would be really pretty. Let's see here, they do, it's called Spring Meadow. Let's see, get, so let's see, please do that technique with the, yeah, maybe, maybe we have other embossing folders in our new release. How about we do that next week? If you guys are interested, let's do like a whole technique um, and I'll just do some, uh, a bunch of different techniques with our new embossing folders. If you guys are interested in that, um, that would be fun. Let's see. I would love to see you do embossing folder class. That would be fun. We need, we should do that. Um, okay. So many techniques. Gail will say, yes, yeah, so much fun. So let's do that. Let's do that. Maybe next Tuesday, let's do like a whole embossing folder evening and we'll just do a whole bunch of different techniques and I'll try some different things. And I will be you guys' guinea pig and we'll just try it out. Let's see, have you ever used other colors of perfect pearls with this technique? I have not because, let's see, Marianne, um, some of those things where you get really messy and like, like inks and sprays, not necessarily these types of inks, but you know, the sprays where you spritz your die cuts and things, they scare the bejesus out of me. And so perfect pearls and it's messy and it like you, I'm afraid that I'm going to mess it up. And I don't know why, 
I get your brayer out. I need to do that. I, I have seen that technique. We're going to do all the things. So I'll study up on some uh, embossing folder techniques and you guys come back on Tuesday night and we'll do a whole bunch of backgrounds. I did that in the fall with um, some spray stains and we did all kinds of like alcohol inks and spray stains and we did a bunch of backgrounds. So let's do that on Tuesday and then maybe next Thursday we can take the backgrounds that we make and create and I'll make a few cards out of them. Would you guys be interested in that? Don says, sounds great. I'll be there. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Uh, that's a great point. I'm not into the mess either. Yes, Mary. It, it, it moves me out of my comfort zone. Even the ink blending, like the messy, the messy ink blending. I don't know why the light is so bad. But when it's not just exactly precise, like I have to talk myself, I have to talk myself into that. Like I like it to be a, a little bit more um, like I know where everything's going. All right. Okay. So uh, now that we have a plan, thank you guys for helping me decide what we're going to do next week. That was easy. Um, let's have Lisa choose our winner. And the way that for those of you that are newbies here, um, we do a giveaway on every live stream and the way we choose a winner is just randomly choosing a comment. And so Lisa is saying congratulations to Christine Kerr. So Christine, if you will email me at Kelly, K E L L E Y at honeybeesnaps.com, I will hook you up with your prize. And um, if anybody ever has questions, if you have questions about the challenge group or the class or anything like that, feel free to email me anytime. Um, I love talking to all of our fellow crafters. And so I'd be glad to help you out if I can. And make sure you go join the challenge group. It is at uh, Facebook. It's called Honeybee Stamps Buzzworthy Challenges on Facebook. And um, go and leave me a comment there and tell me if you're going to be able to join the class and all that good stuff. We would love to have you come hang out with us. All right, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Tomorrow is Friday and I will see you back to create some more backgrounds next Tuesday. Bye guys. Have a great weekend.